So today we're going to be looking at alternating series test. Now alternating series is in the form like this. You have a series that could start at n equals uh, whatever, it could be 2 or 3, but just make sure that it's an infinite series and that it goes infinity. But the most important part is that the inside here is negative 1 to the power of n times bn. It could also be negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 bn. But one thing to know here is that we're not restricted to these two forms. This here could be like n plus 6, 7n plus 1. As long as you have a negative 1, then you can know or kind of know that this is an alternating series. Uh, make sure that bn, which is the sequence, is also greater than or equal to 0. So here, we want to see if this series converges or diverges. And in order to know if it diverges or converges, we have this test called an alternating series test, and I'll just show you in a few seconds. So the alternating series test states that if the two following conditions are met, then the alternating series is convergent. And these two conditions are, the first one is, we take the limit as n goes to infinity of bn, and we say that if this is equal to 0, then that condition is met. And then the second condition is, the sequence bn must be a decreasing sequence. Now if you go back to the section where I was talking about monotonic, uh, monotonic sequences, then you know that a decreasing sequence is when the terms are getting smaller, smaller, and smaller, and it has to be strictly getting smaller, smaller, and smaller, right? But in this case, we're lifting up that uh, condition and saying instead of strictly going smaller and smaller and smaller, it just has to decrease, or the t all the terms have to decrease overall when n goes to infinity. So for example, Let's say from n equals 2 to n equals 10, for this sequence, you can see that the sequences, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger, right? But then from n equals 10 to infinity, you see that the numbers just go smaller and smaller. Now that is acceptable, actually. Acceptable to say that this is a decreasing sequence. So it doesn't have to decrease always strictly from n equals 1 to infinity. We just have to know that as long as in the long term, as n goes to infinity, the sequence decreases, then we're good to go. So, yeah, exactly what I just said here. Um, it's sufficient enough to say that this is a decreasing sequence as long as n goes to infinity. And those are the two conditions. Now make sure that you don't mistake in it. Uh, and what I mean by mistaking it is literally saying that, well, if this, this test right here fails, then that, this, then that means the series uh, diverge. That's not true. Even if this test fails, that doesn't mean that the series here diverges. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's possible for you to not satisfy these conditions and still the series is able to converge. There are several cases of it, but I'm not going to talk about it here. Just make sure that if your test fails, if, if the conditions do not meet, then don't just automatically assume that this is a divergent sequence, a diverging series. What you should do is, if the conditions don't met and this test fails, then try to use another test, like P-series test, for example. And that is it for this section, or for this intro, and have fun uh, doing these questions in this section right here. Thank you for watching, as always.